I feel like God is a really tricky subject. I feel like God is a really tricky belief that a relationship with God is a really tricky aspiration that to truly believe in God and not just have it as like just a thing that you sort of have faith in through a religion but that you actually believe in and a faith that you actually depend on adhere to truly believe in is a tricky business if you're someone that just has faith in God or or, or one of various religions that you adhere to because it's something you had growing up and it's just something that like maybe you go to church once in a while or it's just something that you kind of dabble in but you're not like fully like deeply actually wholeheartedly putting your heart into if you're not truly completely in your heart invested then you know there's no risk there's no there's no investment or a need for your belief to be real there's not really a putting anything on the line type of thing. And if you don't have any risk or have any dependency or have any um, depth like that, then how do you even know that your belief is real? Like you can go to church every Sunday or no Sundays. You can say that you're a Christian or that you're Muslim or that you're Buddhist or that you're whatever but if you don't actually invest your heart into your faith or into God if there's no risk there if there's no dependency then how will you ever know if your faith is right? And at the end of the day, everyone's religion or faith usually has something to do with what happens after death. Then it'll be too late to know if your faith is right. <laughs> but that's not a problem if, if for you your faith or belief is just something that's not supposed to be like a real belief, but just more so something that gives you some inspiration or hope a little bit, but that you're not really involved in. But if you do actually believe in God or really believe in your religion or believe, or like in the history of a religion, then there's a lot of power there if that's true. It's pretty hard to form a relationship with someone that you can't see. Can't see, can't hear. 
that you can only connect with via experiences and those brief spiritual moments that people that are spiritual don't know what I'm talking about, but there's only so many ways in which you can connect or have a relationship with God. It's only so much you can do or so much that you can feel. But what you can see and feel and taste and hear and touch is the world around you. And God's a part of that, so I guess that's something. Perhaps one can connect to God through that. But, um, yeah, there's only so many ways. And your perception will always be a part of it because It's not, even when someone's talking in front of you, like right directly, physically in front of you, you can still misconstrue what they're saying. We're trying to hear God or trying to connect with God, with the being that you can't see, that you can't that you can't through any of your normal senses see, everything is perception. So you could go all kinds of directions with what you think with what you think God is telling you or what you think God is doing for your life. And anytime someone believes something, they're committed to that belief and blind to and there's blind and a lack of openness towards anything that goes against that belief, even if it's true. We all have things that we believe about everything, about different things. Philosophies that we have on life. Beliefs that we have about people, beliefs that we have about ourselves, beliefs that we have about God. And we see what we want to see. So that's also a limitation. And as we follow our perceptions or as we follow our convictions, God's not going to come down and say, you're wrong. Terrorists think they're following God. So any, you can, anyone can think that they're following God. Now, on their side, they'll think they're right, and on another side, people may think they're wrong. Everyone will have their perception. And there's no, like, clear-cut way of, like, oh, that person was wrong. Because you can always spin it however you want at the end of the day. If it's something that you really want to believe, you can make yourself right at the end of the day. That's what my eldest younger brother Kaede does all the time. He has a very good gift for that. If you're in an argument with him.
But as far as anyone's beliefs, if you really believe something, there's nothing to stop you from being imaginative, creative, and being like, oh, actually, at least I got this out of this situation. So God was with me, or this was God. Like, there's nothing to stop anyone saying anything. So how do you know what's real at the end of the, at the end of the day? And how does how does the realness of God still exist in a world where we shape what we want to see, what we want our world to be, what we want our belief in God to be, where we shape what we want God to be? When God isn't what we shape him to be, but what he already is. But there's no one to stop us from doing such. So how do we keep the realness of God? How do we keep an understanding of the realness of God? If this is the nature of things. And how do you trust God when... Your perception can so easily come into the mix. When you can think God wants you to do something, but how do you know that that was so? Or how do you know that's not just your perception? Or if someone else was to say that they think God wants them to do something, how do you know when perception can so easily come into the mix? And what about all these religions? There's five major ones, but there's a whole lot more than that. In the past, in the present, altogether, cumulatively, there's been a lot of religions. How do you know which one is right? Are they all right? Is one right? Because that one really makes sense. Or maybe it would. Is one right? Do they hold do they each hold part of the truth? Of a greater truth? Are they all a piece of the puzzle? Or can one really be right? But even if one was right, there's something to be said about how different religions are made and how there's a tendency for that to be done in various cultures and how that's a commonality that says something about what it is to be human or that says something about us. If there's this tendency towards belief of a greater being, if there's as different as cultures can be, as different as races can be, if that is a commonality, regardless of vast differences from cultures to cultures of how the world works or lenses and beliefs for how the world works, if everyone has generally that tendency to look towards something greater, generally speaking, or at least it, it's, it's a common trend, then that says something about the reality of life or the reality of the reality of humanity or the reality of or the likely likeliness that there is a greater being Because cultures can be very different about how they go about things. Countries can be very different. People can be very different, even as they share certain similarities. But if even through those strong difference of beliefs or different lenses of how the world works, if there can remain through that a commonality of looking to something greater, 
then there must be something greater. And most religions have something to do with God creating the world or this greater being being like the creator of the world or creator of something. Like some religions split it up as far as like different gods being in charge of different things. If it's mythology, if it's Greek mythology or maybe Hinduism, they'll be divided into like a creator, a destroyer. I think, and one other one, or maybe it's more than just three for Hinduism. Maybe there's a lot, but I at least remember something about a creator destroyer. I think Shiva the destroyer, and um, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's three or if there's like multiple, but um, it may differ as far as whether it's one being that created everything, or if it's multiple beings that created different things, or maybe different beings that are in charge of different aspects of life, but there's kind of this tendency towards this greater being creating things. And if we don't believe that a god created things, then there, the other idea out there is the Big Bang Theory, or that like things just came to be, which seems really weird, because if there's pattern, like even though... The creations we make as far as how to govern ourselves don't always make sense. And maybe nature seems like that too. Some maybe it's possible that nature seems like it doesn't make sense at some t at some points too, but like if the world just came out of nothing, then there shouldn't be any like direction or patterns or like any greater design to it which it seems a lot like there is there's way too much diversity in animals and just how the world works is way too like it just seems like it would be very weird for that to come from nothing it almost doesn't make sense but that's my perception if I'm to think of that the possibility that the world came from out of nothing, granted, the idea of a god also seems rather strange, because then it's like, what did God come from? That's always the question that I that, that like my mind will sometimes go to. Like, if God created the whole world, then who made God? But then there has to be a start, even though in my mind, it logic like I can't comprehend that because if there's a god then who created god but then even if i hadn't answered to that then who created that like there has to be a start to that like th the way that i'm thinking things should work almost can't work because if what i want to think is if there's a god who created everything who created god even if i have that answer then who created that being and even if I had that answer, who created that being? Like, there has to be a start. The way that I'm asking lends itself to the idea that there has to be a start, even though that kind of still doesn't make sense. How can something just already be? But that has to be the case because th that's otherwise there's no there's no finishing answer to my question. <sighs> It would just be, who created God? Bob. Who created Bob? Lindsay. Who created Lindsay? Like, there's no... Not that a cr creators would have, like, that name, but, like... There has to be a start, even though that's beyond my logic. 
it, it would what my logic wants to go to is there that there should be something who who created that and who created that but that pattern can only end with a start that asking lends itself to that there has to be a start so God is that start and that's scary <laughs> because a being that like started everything or is beyond my thinking loophole of how everything should have its creator he defies that because he is the start and i don't understand how that's even possible really but it kind of has to be possible but it's just like like cell phones i don't understand how cell phones are possible i don't understand how we can communicate without any connection like any physical connection between cell phones that doesn't make any sense to me but yet it's happening so just because i don't understand something doesn't mean that it isn't so there's stuff in life right in front of me that i don't get but it's happening there's bad things that happen that i don't get but they're happening there's stuff in like so there's stuff technology wise there's stuff even nature wise like maybe if i thought more about the sun i'd be like wait a minute how does the sun just stay in the sky or how actually now that it, well actually yeah like that i feel like that's a stupid question or stupid thing to be baffled on but actually like because it's probably something with gravity or whatever but that is also kind of weird like, especially back in the day when we probably didn't know anything about gravity, like how there's just a huge source of light just in the sky. Like, if not for there also being a moon, like, I would, I would almost think, like, maybe God is the sun. Like, the thing keeping light over all of us, sustaining growth, sustaining, like, just kind of giving life to everything. I would think that's God, but there's also a moon. So, <laughs> unless then I wanted to say God is, there's a God that's the sun and there's a God that's the moon. You could say that. But I don't want to say that because that doesn't go along with my perception. But if someone did say that, that would make a lot of sense. But I grew up with a Christian background. And I left that. And with the stuff of the 20th video, consider myself back to Jesus in a sense, even though that's awkward and I haven't done anything with that. Um, but... Because of my background, because of that belief instilled, there's certain things that I'm just going to be blind to. Because I've already been told what to think on certain things. So even if reality presented different truths, I wouldn't be able to completely digest them, even if I want to, because I've been so deeply told certain ideas. Ideas on heaven and hell. Ideas on homosexuality, and that might not even just be from Christianity, or may not even be mainly from Christianity. It might just be from TV, cultural norms growing up. Um, ideas on what is bad and what is good. What is sin and what is okay to do. Um, ideas on various things. And so if reality offers me something different... Because the, that belief is ingrained, as religion does, which is a problem. Because religion ingrains beliefs that are not just like free-floating, in-and-out beliefs. Like, that you're told that from, a child, from childhood. And even if reality offers something different, you will be in that belief. More or less. I mean, some people grow older and they're like, oh, I don't want to be in that anymore. But even so, if you were taught certain things growing up, some of that stuff may stick with you. But then at the same time, if people don't pass down their tradition and pass down their beliefs, then 
because of how focused cultures can be and countries can be on their own way of things that they've created, it may be easy to lose an understanding of God or a sense of God. And so it's important that we keep passing things down. But at the same time, if you just keep like brainwashing or forcing ideas or instilling seeds of belief, then anything that offers itself contradictory may be not as easily digested. Like God could be showing you all kinds of things. God could be showing me all kinds of things. But if my belief is in one direction, then I'm not going to see what's right in front of me. And all these religions have historical happenings that are like really powerful. Like, if you have a religion that you believe in, and if it's actually true, you have a lot of power there. Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, and it's Judaism, and etc. and etc. Like, if these stories that have been passed down in religious texts and whatnot are true, then you have a higher power that it's very powerful. Like, you have a great aid in your life. Um, like, if the God of the Bible is real, then you have a guy that can, like, or a beam that can split seas that can that can do a lot of things um, that can flood the world but doesn't chooses not to anymore that can create rainbows as a promise that they're never going to do that again that can create this world <laughs> If you believe in Buddhism, and Buddhism is real, then you get to be reincarnated, even though you may not remember your past lives fully, but you get to be reincarnated, and you, all the truths that your religion offers, assuming they are truths, you actually get those. If you don't treat it as a truth, as, some, as a belief, as a, this is real, then it's just kind of a little thing that you can, if you're feeling down, you can go to your religion and get some hope or get some inspiration, but you don't actually have to invest anything. You don't actually have to risk anything. You don't have to fight for the cause, so to speak, that your religion has. You don't have to get into those depths. There's, if there's no, the problem is that if there's no risk, you don't know if your stuff is true. And if it's, if it's not important to you to know if your stuff is true, then I guess so be it. But most religions or most beliefs have something to do with after you die, this is what's going to happen. After you die is kind of the wrong time to find out whether your stuff is right or not. And if the world came from nothing, 
there's just no there's no point to anything except to but the, but it still doesn't make sense because if the if if the world came from nothing but at the same time to be fair like there being a god really doesn't seem to make sense either sometimes as well so if but in certain ways it does but i've i've definitely i've had many times where it seems like okay the idea that there's a god just doesn't make sense but that's because the whole my whole understanding of God isn't based on isn't in a hundred percent um accuracy of truly understanding God. It's based on however I've perceived the idea of God since birth. So since I'm someone who's very imaginative, very Disney, very creative, that played into faith in God, which is great because it allows me for greater faith than other people could have because that's how I am. But at the same time, there's always going to be this reality check going off of like, okay, but is this like, because my under, because my perception of God that I've developed over time or my relationship with God that I've aimed or attempted at or developed over time hasn't per se been based on the reality of God. Though I've scratched into that, because maybe if you're searching for God, you are going to find something. Because I've definitely had many things with God. Um, many experiences, many connections. But I've also had experiences that were off, where I thought something was God and it wasn't. <sighs> so... So maybe you just have to try so that you can learn what is God and learn what isn't. I don't know. But um, but my understanding of God is based on how I've learned to perceive God over time. But as you actually get those moments of truly God you begin to understand who God is, what is God, and what is not. So maybe that's part of the challenge, or part of the journey. Because um, then, what is, what is your perception, or what is your belief, can hopefully get shifted to be the reality of actually God as you start to experience things little by little that help get your stuff on point or get your view or your lens to be accurate or on point but the idea that everything came from nothing I don't know. It's still kind of weird. I guess they're both weird. For everything to come from... To start... But at least if everything... But I'm biased. Because I want to believe in God. So, um... But if everything comes came from a source that was the start, then it makes sense why there's like patterns in nature, or patterns in creation, or such diversity and specificity and traits and all that. Um, it wouldn't make sense why we're so <laughs> like why things are so off in the world in different aspects sometimes in the countries you create or in the cultures or as a whole but then it would make sense as far as perhaps we're in charge of creating in this world in a sense that God gave us kind of the background or kind of 
was the start, but we're the furtherance. We get to create things. And we're not out of, and we have flaws in our attempts at creating, and we have successes in our attempts at creating. But if everything came from nothing, That would I don't know that would be that would be weird too. I'm biased and it's hard to it's hard to defeat the bias because it's there. But then at the same time, if I'm so biased, that's that's not aiming for reality. That's clinging. So, but I don't know. It's still both of them are weird. But at least the the believing in God at least answers the patterns or the things like if if things came from nothing then i don't understand how patterns came to be or how like just the diversity the organization the specificity like there's just too much there's too much um almost design for lack of design is design is too much <laughs> because that's totally biased towards what i'm trying to say but there's too much Stru there's too much structure or art or development there's too like there for that to come from nothing just is very strange i don't think i don't know how it does like that doesn't make sense i don't think unless someone could bring forth like a good answer but someone who would bring forth an answer to how it makes sense will be someone who's biased towards the belief of there not being a God. Because people that don't believe in God, like, they are very committed to that belief if it's the right person. And even if you present stuff, it's not, like, it's not really going to put a crack in their ship, so to speak. Um... A few Saturdays ago, I went downtown in Fargo to meet with um, Sophie and Ben Friesen and hung out with them for a while and hung out with this other with another girl Amanda that I know from a theater audition from I don't know like a year or two ago or some time ago but I ran into her after hanging out with the Friesens and maybe doing other stuff for a little bit, but I ran into her and she had to go to the bank, walked with her, walked with her to the bank, um, and then was tired, was going to go home, but decided that I was going to walk back with her to farmer's market and leave her <laughs> where I, um, got her from or, um, deliver her back safely type of thing. Um, is what I kind of jokingly said, but when I got back, to, when I got back to farmer's market with her, I ran into Howin and Sarah McMasters, and Sarah was talking about how she, um, how she had known that she was going to run into me, um, hanging out with a white girl, <laughs> and I think that's what she said at first, that she had known that she, that they were going to run into me downtown and that I'd be with a white girl. I think that was the initial thing. Um, and I, whatever the initial thing was, I was already sold. Like, that's, that's like, I, because I, because I want to, but like, that's how I'm set. I, I don't believe in coincidences. I'm ready to believe. It's easy for me to believe that type of thing. How her boyfriend isn't as convinced. He's like, I mean, we always run into IB downtown. Not true. They rarely run into I haven't I rarely run into him his girlfriend works at West Acres so sometimes I see her at her workplace but to see them both together downtown very rare it's happened I feel like it's happened like maybe once maybe of one more or two more times but I think it's just basically been once that I can really think of that I've run to them downtown 
but he says this happens all the time. Um, so he's like, well, we, of course we're going to run into IB downtown, and um, he's basically he's not impressed, or he doesn't believe this. And he also doesn't remember Sarah telling him when she had this feeling or when she thought this. Um, so, um, he's kind of, he's kind of brushing it off. The, but I'm, I'm, I'm a believer. I'm believing this. Um, and, and Amanda believed it too. Um, but then I found out that she actually knew the person's name would be Amanda. And then I was like, what? I definitely, like, I believe, like, I already believed before, if you knew the name of the person, definitely believe that you, like, your prediction or your, you know, whatever ability is that you're rocking with right now, definitely believed with it in it. I believed in it when you just said that you knew you're going to run into me and that I'd be with the white girl, um, which I think was the, basically the original thing. But then I found out that she actually had thought of the girl's name or knew the girl's name ahead of time. How still isn't impressed because he and he said this he's like as a statistician or from a statistician kind of point of view um the chances of it of them running into a, into me downtown he said was high not true because I don't really run into them downtown and him I rare like the last time I saw him was at West Acres and before that I feel like I haven't seen him for a long time so. But, he said them seeing us downtown was likely to happen at some point. He said it being a white girl is very likely, which is true. I mean, white is the majority race, so that's that's fair to say. But then, as far as the girl's name being Amanda, that that was a common name. I know two Amandas, basically, and one isn't in the area. <laughs> so, I don't know how com how common Amandas are around here, but... Like, to me, this is, like, a duh, like, how, like, how is he not believing that this is, like, a special ability or, like, something special? And, but he wasn't, he wasn't seeing it because he was, because he said, like, he was coming from a statistician point of view um, as far as the odds and stuff. And his example was, like, like, it, he, he, he had an example of, like, if things were, like, more specific, then he would believe it. But, like, to me, like, she knew the person's name, <laughs> like, that's weird. Um, and so that, like, at first, at first I was, like, dumbfounded or, like, really, tr like, told, like, I believe that this is something special and really just playing off that. But then after I was, like, okay, what, I should try to learn from this. So, I, um, so then I actually, like, told him that I actually should try to learn from him or actually like you know kind of started talking or aiming to actually like not just be like this is what you should think of it but kind of understand where he's coming from so and I think and that's probably when he told me some of the stuff that I've already just talked about but um he just we just didn't see things the same way so um and Amanda was even making points towards even more so why this was a thing because, like, I had gone down with her to the bank when I saw her after hanging out with the Friesens and maybe doing other stuff first, but ran into her. She had to go to the bank. We walked to the bank. I had almost gone home because I was tired, but I decided to walk back with her. If I hadn't walked back with her, I wouldn't have run into them. And then she pointed out that out, and I was like, yeah, that's also <laughs> something. Um of how things just happened a specific way, which is also the case of how I'm in the present situation that I'm in, in life, which seems very, um, seems like there's, it, it seems very hopeless, but it, cause it's, it seems like there's no way out and it seems like there's there's n no i i don't see any way out of this or out of the situ present situation um 
So it's pretty difficult and pretty hard to accept this as reality. But, um, but looking back, I noticed that a lot of things, whether small specifics or bigger things, like there's a lot of things, or at least a decent number of things that are like, has specifically happened that led me to this point. So... It's kind of like that. Um, yeah. So it's so it's kind of difficult. Like I've expressed faith in different videos, and it's easy to say it and mean it but hard to live out the days like yes i know for sure this is gonna work out like i my faith batteries are very low if not dead like i feel like i exhausted all my faith in the first part of this year And now I just don't feel, but yet my mom's faith is incredibly high right now, which is very, like, <laughs> which is interesting, but her faith is, like, through the roof. I don't know where <laughs> she's getting her stuff from, but, and this is the, like, and this is with my parents who, like, I normally are usually the cause of, <laughs> like, uh, like, of emotional discomfort or just difficulty, at least, like emotional wise or just relating to them wise. Yet at this time in my life it's like they're at, they're like a level I, I don't know. They're they're like MVP it's weird because like even in the earlier videos in this series I've talked about how um like in family and growth I talk about how I would go home some weekends and how like every weekend I would come out feeling pissed off about something like the it's rare the last time I went home is the time that that didn't happen when I went home for my mom's birthday um where we watched Suicide Squad and then for Shegmu's son's dedication on that Sunday um that weekend is one where I didn't end up feeling pissed off when I left but all these times that I've gone home this last half year or so like about every time I've left being upset about something so it's not just in the past that they like that they weren't always the best for the kind of person that I am, but even presently. But the last time I went home, not so much. Um, last time I went home went, went well, and then um, how they're how supportive they're being with this whole with this kind of stuff going on mental health, um, life situation, like, they're, you know, the, the lessons they want me, they might want me to take from the situation, like, my mom was saying on the phone about how, like, so now you know that you don't tell everyone everything, but the lessons that they want me to take won't be the lessons that I'll want to take, because sometimes, just because you act a certain way and it doesn't bring about the results that you want, it doesn't mean that you stop being a good person, that you stop caring about people, that you start stop putting your heart out there the way that you did previously. Like, I don't want to be... I see how some people, when they try to be good towards people or try to... Some good people can easily feel like um, if like they get hurt or something like that, that they should learn their lesson and not be kind anymore, like, but then the world is robbed of its beauties, like, there's ugly in the world and there's beauty in the world, if the ugly defeats the beauty, then the, if you're beautiful, stay beautiful, like, we can't let the darkness of the, okay, that sounds like too much, we can't let the 
difficulties of the world like make us less of who we are if we really believe in who we're being or you know that type of thing there has to be strength of character like there's things to learn from all that's happened but like to stop having the heart that did some of the actions that were done is not my goal so being open with people has the benefit of you often realizing how everyone has stuff that they're going through that it's not just that we're all connected or that we all have difficulties that we face so many times of late it's like I say something that I've experienced that's difficult or some pain or some something that someone else might not talk about but if I bring it up to see that someone else has something relevant but if we keep it quiet we don't have that sense of community or that sense of connection so <laughs> So, because of everything that's happened, it could be the death of my person, not the physical death. I mean, well, but I mean, okay, no, um, it could be the non-physical death of me if I'm not careful, but I, I don't want to lose the best of me or lose my values or lose who I am I just need to hone them or learn but the lessons that I take might not be the same lessons that other people would take doesn't mean that I'll stop being me <sighs> so what happened with one person doesn't mean that it will happen with every person or every situation. And it doesn't mean that that person was a bad person. Just putting that out there as well. Um... But as far as how and Sarah, back to that story, after talking with them later on that day, I um, was still downtown and just sitting down somewhere and I was like, how did he not see that that was something special? And then it clicked with me eventually that like, it's because he didn't want to see it. Because I realized like, if I didn't want to see something special, or if I didn't want to see that side of things, like... That like, it's not it. Some of the like the, it is a white. It was a white a white girl. For me to be with a white girl is like, for a girl to be white is common. For, um. You know, for her name to be Amanda, it's like that. I mean, you know. If um, that they would run into me downtown, like. If you don't want to see something there, then you won't necessarily see it. So that's why, in a sense, depending on the person, it might be pointless to try to talk to people that are certain people that are atheist or that are agnostic might be a better bet because that's an uncertainty it's, as far as I understand. But for people who don't want to believe, they already don't want to believe like something powerful could make them believe. But for those who don't want to believe or don't want to see something, they're not going to see something a lot of the time. So, And they may be very strong in that belief. 
And people who do want to see something are going to see something, even when something isn't there. So, hopefully we can all learn to see reality. Amen.